All right. Hello. This is the fourth part, I think. All right. Um, <laughs> it's been two, three days since I actually did it. <laughs> I never got around to it. I, I just was watching YouTube every time I got home. All right. All right. Now this is my first public performance, Rosa. I am a bit nervous. Catherine scratched her head. What will I do if I make a mistake? Papa will be very upset. I don't even know what's happening anymore. The Marquis knelt in front of Catherine and rubbed her shoulders fondly. You won't make a mistake, Mad Cheery. As long as you put up your heart into your put your heart into the keys, play to touch your audience, and any mistake won't matter. Do you understand? Catherine stared at the Marquis. Not really. The man chuckled. You will someday. Just play your first song with me in your mind, will you? Something that will... Something that you think will make me smile. Guilamine held Catherine's clear young eyes in his gaze. He kissed her hand. It was covered with sticky sugar and breadcrumbs. Catherine blushed. It was the first time she looked embarrassed by anything. I... It would be my pleasure, sir. Catherine tugged, trudged up the wooden podium and walked towards the middle of the stage. The crowd chattered. The crowd's chatter did die down. She uh, curtsied in front of her audience, waved to her father, and stole a glance at Golamin. The man gave her a tiny nod. She sat down in front of the piano, admiring the cream and ebony keys underneath her fingers. Her own piano was broken and beaten. Father had father had sold it, sold his house for it. Horse for it. A A3 key never played, and the strings would creep when it was cold. But it never failed her. She knew the keys like they were her own fingers. She whispered to the new piano softly as it coaxed a beautiful, untamed animal, as if coaxing... Let's be friends, okay? She saw Rose at the far end of the podium, watching her diligently. There was a renewed vigor in her blood. She could hear the keys calling out to her. A song that would make him smile. She placed her fingers on the keys. She began to play. I don't hear anything. I don't know if the recording's picking up anything, but as the at the ring of the first few notes, it became apparent that the audience to the audience that this girl was something special. Here was a little girl, barely tall enough to reach the pedals of the piano, playing as if she owned it. There were times she'd miss a note or two, but that didn't matter. She played the song to make someone smile, and it touched everyone, everyone present. Her musical skill was far beyond her ears. Her fingers caressed the keys as, they, as, as if she was making a flower crown, carefully weaving the petals. Watch my mic be muted. Oh my god, I... I <laughs> I would really love to see if my mic was in my headset was muted. It was not, thank you. That would have been... That just would have been horrible. She knew the correct way to tie the leaves so they wouldn't tear, tear like all smart little girls did. As the piano saw, sank under her hands, Catherine seemed to disappear right in front of the audience's eyes. She was just a vision. After all, somebody... Leading them, after all, somebody leading them down a dream. A dream of a garden, the springtime, the shade of a tree on a windy day. Alright, there is sound. Oh. The couples in the audience tightened their grip on their hands of their partners. Some closed their eyes and let the music 
saturate their soul. Sweet memories of youth. A first love. The yawn of a newborn. Oh. Rose's eyes shone as she start, stared at Catherine. Her heart was captured by this image of her. A young girl swayed her head to the music, smiling as the notes poured out on her. She couldn't take her eye away from Cat. Ooh. I from Catherine's glowing face. Was this happening? Oh, it's not key. Was this love? She looked she looked like she was in love. And she was, wasn't she? In her eight instance, she was still in love with her with life. In love with her family, with her pets, in love with every new discovery. She was full of hope. It was a bit it was a bittersweet feeling for Rosa. A happy tear a happy teardrop rolled down her cheek. She wanted to warm herself in that hope if she could. In the audience, Golamine and Catherine's father sat beside each other. Oh my god. So pride, your daughter is amazing. She is, isn't she? I, I mean, part of my arrogance, my liege. I, I am very proud, father, you see. No pardon necessary, sire. She f has she found a sponsor yet? The Duke of Versalius once spoke to me about it, but sh but we have not made any arrangements. Then I must steal her away as soon as possible. Sire, I'd like to be Catherine's primary sponsor, if that's alright with you. Why, Sire, and to further cement my status, that piano she is playing right now, it is hers. I bought it to I bought it for her. Francis' eyes widened in astonishment. Th that is... He gulped. That is beyond generous, sire. Golamine smiled. Well, I must make it hard for you to refuse me, you see. I took the, I took the opportunity of asking you outright. You see, the Duke might offer an extravagant piano plated in gold. In that case, I have no choice but to humble, humbly concede. What? I'm kidding. The Duke of Versailles is worth, is the worst miser you will ever miser you will ever meet. The men chuckled, and that's it. I'm done. Now with the game. Done recording. Quick save. They save that stuff. Save this stuff. Boom. And that's it. Still on chapter one, uh, three parts in. They've all been 12 minutes long. I wonder if this is going to be 12. Probably less. Goodbye.